Okay, so this is a video where we're going to take a look at how to do uh, some head modeling. And uh, we're going to start out using this skeleton file. It's actually a skull. It was downloaded from highend3d.com. Uh, and so it's actually a full skeleton file. It's an actual scan. Here we're looking at the fact that uh, from different angles using this file, we'll be able to see things such as the lower curve of the mandible, which we're taking a look at now. Uh, we're also able to look at the size of the cranium. And uh, the idea is that we're going to use a polygon cube on top of this. Uh, so I've gone ahead and put it on a layer, locked it out so that we can't select it as you saw. Uh, and our first step is we're going to make a polygon cube, which is what you see here. I'll move it upwards. Uh, we'll enter the side orthographic view and I'll just scale it up. Uh, using the move tool to place this, we'll scale it up as well and make sure that it fits on top of the head. You'll also notice that I'm using orthographic image planes for this. And uh, by using those image planes and the skull together, I can get a really solid view of how to actually make this head. So I'll enter the attribute editor, and uh, in the middle tab of the attribute editor, the uh, parametric creation options, uh, I'll go ahead and set my subdivision settings to 6 by 6 by 5. So as you see here, 6 is going to allow me on the front to get even divisions of 3 and 3 when I eventually make my duplicate instance. Uh, I'll go uh, 6 vertically here, 5 or 6 vertically, so that's 6. And um, then I'll go 5 going back. For depth and these are just settings that I found that work really nicely for allowing us to round out the head and get a good form from this. I'll jump into the front orthographic view and uh, back to the perspective so now you can see what's going on and I'll open up the uh, x-ray shading and uh, now you can just see how far away this cube is from actually fitting on top of the skull which is one of the reasons why I like working with the skull underneath it really allows you to see how you can conform it to the underlying shape. In the uh, orthographic side view, we'll uh, go ahead and take the uh, vertices that are here in just a second, and we're going to start to conform them to the shape of the skull, also trying to round out an edge loop for the front of the face a little bit. Uh, I like to contain the front of the face in an edge loop, uh, going sort of from the jaw backwards. And so I'm going to scale these down, these vertices along the front, both sets. Uh, and then I'll take these points and just move them down a little bit. And the vertex points at the corners, I'll start to move forward to round out the face. And by pulling this line back, I'm able to actually push back sort of a full edge loop onto the piece. Now I'm just going to take these vertices and try and trace the contours of the skull. And this is going to be our head. Uh, now using that line that we're seeing as my jaw, and I'll bring this straight up. Of course, the ear is going to go behind the jaw a bit later, so I need to make sure that this row is positioned correctly. Uh, the back of the head here, uh, I'm just going to conform to the skull and the ortho views behind it. Uh, the views don't match up specifically with the skull, only because they're from a different person, of course, but uh, they will be a really good reference when used together. Uh, once I'm done with this step, I'm going to jump back into the uh, perspective view here. You can see how it fits just a little bit better, but of course it's still off somewhat. And we've got this edge loop kind of developed here on the front of the face a little bit. Uh, now we could go into the front view and try and start manipulating the points here, but that's just a kind of stupid way of doing things. Uh, instead of that, I like to take the uh, model as it is uh, and use the Sculpt Geometry tool. Uh, first I'm going to soften my normals so that I can work with this tool by going to Normals, Soften Edge. And uh, then, just a second here, we're going to open up the Sculpt Geometry tool. It's the icon on the shelf, which is a mountain with a little hula hoop around it. I'll double click on that. And in the Tool Settings window, now I'll have a couple settings I can use to uh, actually open this up. In the Stroke palette here, you'll see I've uh, gone and enabled Reflection Stroke, uh, so that I have two. Now it looks like kind of Mickey Mouse. Uh, using B, holding down B, and using uh, the Zoom In and Out command, I can change the size of this brush. And I've set this brush to smooth just now, which is the middle of the five icons underneath these skull parameters. And I will just start to smooth this out and conform it to the head underneath. Uh, I have this in x-ray mode, which again allows me to see what's going on underneath this. 
and I'm just going to work my way around the head, pushing back around the temporal line, pushing back around the maxilla, and down here along the mandible as well. Go back a little bit further here, we're towards the back of the cranium. It's the occipital protuberance on the back of the skull. Uh, we'll also look at the zygomatic bone here on the cheeks, trying to pull that out just a little bit. Uh, when we've done enough work with the smooth brush, we're going to switch in just a second to this sculpt uh, brush, which allows me to pull outwards. Um, also, I can use my uh, Alt and Control keys, depending on whether, I need the, uh, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, to push outward or inward to actually invert my options. Push inward here a little bit um, in the orbital cavity for the eye. Just moving those vertices around. And I find these brushes are a lot uh, easier to use than actually just manipulating vertices by hand. Uh, and it's a much, much quicker fashion of working, which again, it's what it's all about, getting this done quickly. Uh, making sure the jawline works correctly. And it's not going to be a great form, but it'll be close enough. Turn off x-ray mode, and I'm also going to go and hide the skeleton now. And you can see kind of what's going on here. The, head um, is starting to get the shape that we're looking for. Uh, topology has a little bit of work that needs to be done, specifically here around the brow, I'm not too happy with. So I'm going to come in and edit that in just a minute. First now, however, I'm going to delete out one side of the model uh, and go into object mode. And now I'm going to make a duplicate instance of this by opening up Edit Duplicate Special, setting the type to Instance, and setting the scale to negative 1 along the x-axis. Now I've got an active copy I can use on the left side to mirror what's going on on the right. Uh, and with this, I'm able to move vertex by vertex to help define that temporal line along the front of the skull a little bit. Uh, I'm just not really liking how this is going all that much, so we'll move this out a little bit to fix it. Notice as well how the skull, the back of the head, as we just saw, is always going to be a little bit wider than the front of the head. Also along the cheeks, I'm going to poke these out a bit to make sure that they have the sizing that they need. And, I'm not exactly working off the skull or any image planes at the moment. I'm just trying to use my knowledge of how a head works and fix this up. This line I'm going to move down to eventually make room for the uh, edge loop, which is uh, going to contain the mouth. And we'll just take a look at how this works along the bottom. Again, using the skull, I was able to actually get this uh, parabolic arch from the bottom working. You can see here in my orthographic side view uh, how close this comes, but there's still some work that needs to be done to re-manipulate these points. And I'm going to try and push these back behind the jaw. And uh, these points down here, which uh, near the cervical vertebrae of the spine, I don't really need right now, so I'm going to delete these out. Uh, this will give me an opening that later I can turn into my neck. And uh, we'll go back in here, hide the skull, remove out this last face. And uh, there we go.